All right, folks, let's get into this. I just love this topic. <laughs> you know, and I, I know I've said it before, but I'm just, I'm so happy with this, this choice of book uh, for this class because I, I think uh, Pierce just does such a good job of embodying uh, the whole idea of effective professional communication. I mean, it's, it's a book that it's so informative and it's, it's filled with good advice. There's a lot of good information. Uh, but it's also just, it's fun to read it. You know, am, am I <laughs> the only one who thinks this? I mean, I could just pick this book book up in an airport, you know, and read it on a flight and, and have a good time and, and, you know, feel like I got something out of it. Uh, so I really hope that you're, uh, you know, enjoying the book and getting something out of it too. But do try to, uh, you know, think about how she's putting these chapters together and the, and the style and the tone and how she's connecting uh, with her audience, because I, I really think she's practicing what she's preaching, you know, all throughout this book. She is an effective uh, professional communicator, and she's helping us uh, as well to, um, you know, follow in her footsteps, basically, and become professional communicators herself. So, uh, anyway, enough of that. Uh, appearances. Uh, so, in this lecture, we'll be uh, talking basically about clothes and uh, personal hygiene. Uh, so let's just see what I've got here for uh, objectives. Uh, so, yeah, before we got it, do anything else, I thought I would talk a little bit briefly about just some of my personal experience as a professor, instructor, whatever you want to call me now for, geez, I guess uh, over 20 years at this point. Uh, uh, so what are some things I think are responsible for why people aren't learning this stuff in college anymore and why this might be the first class. This might be the only class where topics like the, these were coming up. And so that, I thought I'd just briefly chat about that. Uh, and then get into the importance of appearance. We'll, we'll take a look at some of uh, Pierce's tips here and then we'll look at some websites where you might be able to pick up some uh, clothing, appropriate clothing on a budget. I think we'll have some fun with that. Uh, plus, you know, I'm counting on you all. I know some of you uh, know more about this stuff than I do, frankly. So I'd like to get your take uh, on some of this, especially if you are an effective uh, shopper, <laughs> you know, and have better tips than what I'll put in this uh, lecture. Maybe we could share those in a future version of this. Uh, yes, uh, how to stock a wardrobe on a budget. So all this stuff will come up here. Uh, so let me just cover this first point here briefly. Uh, so what I've noticed, I've taught at many different kinds of schools, many different kinds of colleges in different states. Um, and some of those schools are what they call for-profit schools. And those schools are interesting because they're fixated on professional students, usually people who work at a, well, the one, the one that comes to mind uh, was in Florida, and there's a large Verizon service there, the, the phone company. So that what Verizon would do for its workers is one of their perks, I guess, was you could take classes at this uh, college. They would pay for the classes, and they'd give you the time off, and you could study uh, whatever you wanted to, basically, at this uh, at this college, this for-profit school. But the classes were quite different than what you might be used to here. You know, for example, there was a whole class was just nothing but basically what's in this chapter. I mean, <laughs> a, a lot more detail, and even included things like uh, different silverware and like how to order from a fancy menu and just, you know, all of this kind of stuff. I don't know if it ever got around to teaching people how to play golf, but <laughs> uh, a lot of it wasn't so much book, what you might think of as academic or book, book learning type stuff, is, is more like etiquette and, and, you know, sort of business communication skills that are uh, not just in the office, but when you're outside the office and you're, you're trying to socialize and, you know, work the work your way up the corporate ladder, basically, make those social connections. Uh, so they had, like, whole classes just about that. And I always thought it was interesting, you know, that uh, Verizon, you know, is paying... Uh, for these classes, obviously, they want their students to learn this stuff because they didn't feel like they got it. They knew it already. You know, they wouldn't be, you know, footing the bill for this. Uh, but I think it was largely because they wanted their workers, their employees, to basically represent the company in a more professional way. So learning that stuff was, uh, you know, a step towards that. But, <laughs> you know, I have to admit when I was teaching there, I was, you know, maybe like in early my early 20s or... And a lot of these students were uh, 40s and 50s, you know, professional line operators, and they call them linemen. 
you know, so quite a bit older. <laughs> and at first I was a little bit intimidated, but, uh, you know, actually it was, it came to be one of my favorite classes, you know, ever. I just, I just love those, working with those students and just so much, uh, so much fun. We really got uh, close, you know, I really got close with those students and I shared a lot of, uh, life lessons, you know, back and forth. They'd tell me about their experiences. and <laughs> you know, I probably learned as much from, you know, you hear teachers say that all the time, but that really was a case where I feel like I learned about as much from them uh, as they did from me. So a lot of fun. Uh, but anyway, I just thought I would share that. Uh, well, I actually didn't get to the point I was trying to make. Uh, <laughs> so, so the problem is traditionally colleges are not meant for let me just be blunt about this. They're not meant for working class kids. Uh, my family's working class. You know, my dad worked at a, a sawmill. You know, his dad worked at a sawmill. <laughs> it's, it's Louisiana, it's a timber industry. Uh, none of them went to college. Um, and there was uh, the people who went to college, you know, when they were of college age, would, would have been like uh, the sons and daughters of uh, what you might call elites, right? Senators. Uh, the governor, you know, if, if you have a wealthy family, there, you might have gone to college, but otherwise you would not have. Uh, and, of course, those students that are kind of raised in that wealthy environment would already know all that stuff, right? They've, they know how to play golf, uh, you know, just to throw, <laughs> throw that out there, you know. But uh, uh, that's not really, I would say that's not like the traditional college, or that version of a student is not what we're dealing with uh, now, you know, they're dealing with students like me <laughs> so, you know, somebody who doesn't come from that background. You know, nobody ever told me how to tie a, a tie. You know, that was just, you know, I don't know who would have known that. I actually uh, got my grandfather to show me. But the only reason he knew how to do it was because he was in the Army. <laughs> that was part of the, I guess, basic training or something. They teach people how to tie ties as part of that. I'm not really sure. All I know is he was really good at it. <laughs> he could do it really quickly. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the point is, I don't think that the colleges have necessarily caught up with the idea that they're dealing with a different student population now. And so I'm really glad to be teaching this class because I think it's kind of helping to fill this, this gap in a little bit. And hopefully prepare you a little bit better maybe uh, than others, some other students who maybe due to no fault of their own aren't in this class, <laughs> they're not, not getting exposed to this stuff. Maybe you can loan them a copy of your Pierce book to, to help them out a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, I just think it's useful stuff to know, and I don't assume anybody should know it already. I just, you know, you have to learn something, right? Okay, so let's start off with a little bit of a writing prompt. Uh, so do you feel that proper attire and good personal hygiene are important in professional communication why or why not? Let's take a look at our Huskies here and take a few minutes to think about this and come back and then we'll dive into Pierce. Okay, let's turn over then uh, to Pierce. And again, I'm not going to go over everything she says because you should, you should read it on your own. Uh, but she does make a lot of good points in here. I like this one about you know, this is something that kind of spoke to me, I think, because you, you probably noticed I have somewhat luscious hair. Uh, somewhat unusual, uh, you know, even for professors, right? Uh, especially for men, you know, supposed to have the, the short haircut and also have the, you know, the facial hair. And I had friends, a good friend of mine, who was um, in school with me. We went to school together. He was uh, getting his uh, Ph.D. in philosophy. Whereas, of course, I was doing English. Uh, but anyway, he, he looked a lot more, uh, <laughs> you know, however you want to say it, uh, metal, I suppose, uh, than yours truly. I guess his hair was probably about as long as mine. But he had this big sort of Doug Dynasty beard, you know, going and all this, you know, big mustache. <laughs> uh, but when he went on the job market, he cut his. He went clean shaven and cut his hair, you know, and didn't get a job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just went in, I wasn't going to cut my hair, you know, and I just went in and did my interviews and <laughs> here I am. <laughs> so take from that story what you will. Uh, but anyway, I would agree with a certain, some certain points that she makes here. I mean, for one, one of the things that drew me to being a professor was that there would be, uh, I could get away with this, you know, there wouldn't be a, 
uh, a mandate, a uh, what do you call it, a, like a strict dress code and they said I had to have short hair and I had to wear a suit and tie to work. Now I have taught at universities that did require a shirt and tie, uh, at least for the, the male professors. I'm not sure if they still do that or not. But anyway, it's certainly a point to make. I like the way she words this. Um, the fact is, at work, you are not being paid to do whatever you want. And so I really thought about that. You know, I thought about that a lot, what she's saying there. And, you know, sometimes I hear from people that work at a job and they have to wear a uniform or maybe a vest or something, and they, and they really don't like that. They feel like it sort of interferes with their, you know, ability to experience express themselves. Basically, it's like it's like they're being repressed or pressed with that. Uh, but one way to look at it is just, well, maybe look at it this way. That's They're paying you to wear that vest. <laughs> it's a pretty easy way to make some money, right? Just to put this, you know, vest on. Uh, there's worse ways to make a living, I guess. You could uh, look at it that way. So I thought that was a pretty good point. You know, obviously, it's something you will have to, you know, think about in your own, uh, you know, where you are with that. What are you willing to compromise on? Uh, what do you feel like is, uh, you know, where do you want to take your stand, I suppose. Uh, but the importance is, I, I think, to be aware of it, you know, make that choice consciously, not to just uh, sort of bumble, stumble around and not be aware that there's uh, expectations regarding where you're supposed to wear at certain jobs. Uh, yeah, and she talks, she goes on about sweatpants and uh, blue jeans. For some reason, she, yeah, do not wear jeans. Um, she talks about how she was kind of got a rude awakening on this, I guess, or she almost did. Uh, she was smart enough to avoid <laughs> disaster, basically, at a Capitol Hill, uh, where everybody was telling her, oh, just dress in jeans, you know, it'll be fine. And then, of course, she shows up and nobody there is in jeans. And if she had worn the jeans and, you know, the flip-flops, she would have been really embarrassed. And it's not just embarrassment. I mean, it, it, that's bad enough, but the implication here is this, it can actually affect your, your job. You could even be fired. Like, you know, this example here is this guy might actually get fired over these uh, sweatpants. You know, so it's certainly uh, something to think about. You know, what is, uh, you know, I thought she, somewhere in here she talks about how when you go to the interview, yeah, here, here, look at this. So when you interview for a position, look around and check out what people are wearing in the office. I mean, that's really good advice. And, you know, you're going to be there anyway doing the interview. And, of course, you'll be in a, you know, informal clothes for that. But uh, you'll probably be nervous about the interview. You know, okay, that's an understandable. But see if you can, you know, do a little scan, you know, while you're there, you know, making your way to the office, to HR, you know, wherever this interview is. You know, and just, you know, note, like, what are people wearing? Are they wearing real formal clothes? Uh, and the usual advice, and I think she repeats this, is that you want to be a little bit dressier than you feel like you need to be. Or <laughs> if you're looking around and you're thinking, well, everybody here is kind of at maybe a six in terms of formality. Maybe you want to be like a seven, you're just a little bit ahead of the the rest of the folks there. Um, and you even get she even gets compliments on this. You know, believe it or not, this is you know coming back to my my family in there, in the sawmill, you know, even there, I noticed this, you know, when I was working there at that sawmill, I would note that the supervisors, the sort of, they're not really managers, but sort of the lead, they called them lead men, or the the people that were uh, directing the operations, I guess, uh, they wouldn't necessarily be in like suits and ties out, you know, in the on the factory floor, you know, that would have been, that would have been sort of out of place, because they, they don't want to get, wear some expensive super expensive clothes and you know get them dirty <laughs> like oil or sawdust or whatever but still there was you know they they would be like in dockers maybe and like a button-up shirt and of course they always looked neat and everything was was ironed and uh and it was just a different look uh, than the people that were working on the you know basically the, the conveyor belts and the assembly lines they might be wearing like old t-shirts and jeans or <laughs> whatever uh but i think she's right that if one of those folks was kind of eyeing that you know next uh, position maybe they wanted to become a supervisor one day themselves they might just make an effort to say okay i know all my friends here are wearing the the jeans but i'm going to just start dressing more like that uh person who's ahead of me and you know see what kind of uh, effect that has so it's, it's certainly true and i'll just say this for 
you know, again, as a professor, and you probably noticed it even in this class, uh, you know, professors don't, some professors wear suits and ties every, every day, constantly. And those are the ones that do tend to get selected for any kind of administrative upgrade, promotion, you know, if there's a committee coming up, some, some important responsibility. Uh, people always seem to want to defer to those people who wear the uh, more formal clothes. Uh, then the folks are a little bit, uh, <laughs> you know, shall we say more free going, I guess, or, uh, you know, a little more liberated, I guess, in, in terms of uh, attire and stuff like that. But you know, it's just something uh, to think about. Okay, let's get into, um, oh, just one more story about this while I'm thinking about it. Uh, so when I was in college, I had this wacky idea. I didn't often fly. You know, I, I still don't. I don't really like flying. Um, but sometimes you go to conferences and conventions and things. Uh, but I decided to do a little experiment. So, I, you know, most people, when they go to the airport, uh, they want to be ca They dress very casually because they know they'll be taking their shoes off. And, you know, they, they want to be comfortable. Uh, so they wear very informal clothes, you know, like the shorts and the, you know, the flip-flops and that sort of look. Um, and I was doing that. I noticed I didn't really get treated all that well. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like uh, I wasn't really being respected very much. And so one time, just as a fluke experiment, didn't need to do this at all, but I just decided I would wear like a suit and tie and look really sharp as I could make myself look and, and then go to the airport. And that was, I mean, it was just night and day. I mean, the way everything from like the way people interacted with me, the, you know, the, of course, the, the flight attendants, but... <laughs> You know, it's just, you know, it was like a visible, you really, I really noticed this uh, tremendous change in uh, the way I was being treated. And it was just, it wasn't like an expensive suit, nothing like that. Uh, but it just kind of made me stand out because, again, most people are just wearing the, uh, you know, if you're like, everybody else is wearing jeans and flip-flops and sandals and you're the one in the, in the suit, uh, they're going to think you must be somehow more important or maybe, who knows, wealthier you know, who knows how it works. I'm just telling you, it, it really does work. It's not, you know, this is, uh, <laughs> this is real stuff. <laughs> uh, try it sometime. All right, so she's going to get into some really brass tacks here. She talks about where to shop. And I do have the, uh, the website of TJ Maxx. I don't work for TJ Maxx. And <laughs> I know next to nothing about what I'm sharing with you here on this page, but... Uh, I noticed these are very reasonably priced. I mean, $20 for this V-neck wrap dress. Let's see, am I specified? Yes, these are work dresses. So again, I now here's a nice formal uh, business casual ensemble. It's flipping it around for some reason. Uh, $40. You see, some of these will be on sale. There's some are as low as fifteen dollars. So this is what I was telling you before. Let me show you the uh, the men's one. And for this one, I went to Men's Warehouse. And you notice, you know, I've been to Men's Warehouse a few times for weddings, and you know, you rent uh, you can rent tuxedos there yeah, for the wedding. Uh, but they also just have business clothes, you know, business uh, suits. And, and I was on this site looking, and I found that. You know, a lot of these suits, I thought they'd be more expensive than this, to be honest with you. But, like, this one is, you know, a really nice-looking suit. I mean, <laughs> looks. I'm thinking about going uh, going there after this and picking this up. It's, it's 119 but you get the pants and the, I don't know what all comes with this, but at least the jacket and the, and the pants. You know, I was thinking these would be, does it come with all this stuff? You know, who knows, maybe you show up and they start adding things. But, but $119 seems like a pretty good deal. You know, at TJ Maxx and stores like this and Ross, uh, you know, it's, it's a... Let's see what they have for men here. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, category, no. Somewhere here there should be like a uh, formal... <laughs> Formal wear. I don't know. Do they have men's suits? I wonder. Let's see. Featured. I'm gonna have to. I should have looked at this before I was trying to show it to you. So uh, let's just. I'll just try this business suit and see if anything pops up. 
Yeah, so TJ Maxx might not be the best store for uh, uh, for men's suits, but you know, Men's Warehouse is one here in town uh, that I'm familiar with, but there's plenty more. Uh, and just like um, Pierce says here, usually these clothes, if you shop for it on sale, you know, I would do this uh, for teaching, you know, you need to wear basically business casual, dockers, uh, polo shirts, all that sort of thing. But I'd always notice at places like Ross, you could pick up the, the shirt and tie combo. And I love those because you don't have to, I didn't have to worry about matching the tie. <laughs> it was, you sort of came with the shirt so you knew it would work uh, color-wise. Uh, but other times, and I'll be honest about this, you know, I would just uh, find somebody that, you know, sometimes I'd be in the malls and I would just find, uh, looking in at the stores, and they had basically the kind of clothes that I was looking for. I would just ask the salesperson. You know, sometimes i just go in there and say, look, I don't even know what looks good. I'm clueless. <laughs> you know, here's my budget. I'm trying to teach, you know, uh, help me out here. <laughs> and usually they would just love that, you know, the... Uh, the salespeople, and they would, uh, you know, really just recommend things. I never would have picked this stuff out myself. They would just give it to me. Uh, of course, you know, they didn't give it to me. I had to buy it, okay. But, uh, you know, it was always fun because I get, I get so many compliments on, oh, you look so nice today. Uh, <laughs> and I was uh, really, I owed it all to those those salespeople. So, uh, you know, try that. Sometimes just, just ask people for some help. They'll be happy to help. Okay, let's uh, move forward a little bit. Oh, we got women's clothes, men's clothes, shoes, the work bag. And this is a good one. Look at number seven. <laughs> you know, I had some dear colleagues of mine. And, you know, I don't know what it is about professors looking scruffy. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know that this person is like super smart. They're basically like sometimes genius level intellectual, and they're walking around looking like, you know, this is this will, this reference will date me somewhat, but Maynard G. Krebs, <laughs> you know, from uh, uh, Dobie Gillis. Have you ever watched Nick at Night or something? You should you should look that show up. It's it's fun. Uh, but I know people that for some reason this number seven evades them, so they have like nice suit, nice tie. They'll be very well kempt, very stylish. And then they'll be dragging around this ancient briefcase, like a ragged looking thing, or there's like an old, uh, not a trapper keeper, but you know, like, the, <laughs> you remember those? <laughs> It'd be like they're dragging around their old trapper keeper from high school. Uh, not that extreme, but, you know, it just kind of bugs me. I'm like, if you're going to go, if, you, if you're trying to look nice, professional, why are you carrying around this you know, old sack? <laughs> you know, upgrade again. Ross, TJ Maxx, good place to go. You know, get something that looks uh, looks slick, looks good. You know, makes a bigger difference uh, than you might realize. And I, you know, of course, she doesn't talk about this, but a lot of people these days are saying, "Oh well, everything is Zoom, so why should I bother? You know, why should I even? Why, why don't I just wear pajamas? You know, uh, or maybe I'll wear this on top but have pajamas or something, uh, or not even put shoes on. You know, indoors and all this stuff." Uh, but, but they, they're saying now, and there's actually studies out, I just saw these, where they're saying even in that case you should still dress for success because a lot of this isn't about appearance, like how, what other people see. Uh, it's more about, it's more of a mental thing. It's more about if you look, if you're dressed professional, you feel professional, the confidence goes up. You know, you feel stronger, you feel more solid, you feel more secure. Uh, so even in a Zoom, you know, it makes a difference. I mean, just imagine then uh, how big a difference it would make, uh, you know, in a, in a real job. Uh, let's see. Uh, anything else here? Facial hair should look like you give a damn. Yes, so you don't want to be <laughs> looking like, well, I don't know. Those, those Duck Dynasty, you ever seen that Duck Dynasty show? You know, I don't know if you know what I'm, what I'm talking about there. They have the, the long hair and the big beards. and you think. <laughs> uh, But I'm pretty sure even those folks, they probably do, you know, they don't have, like, chicken bones <laughs> stuck in their beards, <laughs> you know, and gr gr gravy stains and, and things of that sort. So, yeah, that's the main thing. I would argue that's true for anybody is, you know, being uh, being clean, you know, brushing teeth. Uh, my grandmother, she had a saying that uh, 
she said, she'd say, if anybody ever, if anybody ever offers you a mint, take it. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay, that probably, yeah, I could sort of see the, uh, the uh, why that makes sense. So always, you know, in honor of her, but just because it was good advice, I always try to carry some mints around. You know, you get the little tins of uh, Altoids with the little, uh, like, there's like st uh, strips, Listerine strips, I think they call those. They just fit in your pocket, your wallet. It's, uh, you know, good to have something like those. Uh, but anyway, a lot of good advice in here. I hope you, I hope you like this. You know, this is a good, good point here about the strong cologne. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, do, you, do you have that person in your office or... <laughs> Do you know that person that's just <laughs> you know, like your eyes are watering? They put on so much uh, Axe body spray or whatever the case may be. You're like, man, maybe you should tone it down a little bit. <laughs> Trying to breathe here. Uh, okay, just say no at work. Leggings, flip flops, clothing with words or a message, ripped jeans, visible bra straps, mini skirt. Anything you would wear to a yoga class, the gym, the, the beach, or the club. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's great. You know, I even hear, I, you know, professors, you know, just hang out in the hallway sometime where the professors have their offices. And if you wait long enough, if you wait a couple seconds, <laughs> you'll hear them start talking about, oh, my goodness, these, the students these days and what they're wearing. My God. Uh, they're wearing PJs to class. <laughs> uh, uh, they're, they're just wearing, you know, completely inappropriate clothing, and it's not really preparing them very well for success. And I, I really do think this, you know, it's just not how I was, you know, I was just not raised that way. You know, it was just the idea of, uh, you know, when you're going to someplace special like school, like school and church, you know, those are two places where uh, you want to dress whether, let's put it this way, whether I wanted to or not, I dressed <laughs> nicer. <laughs> you know, because it was kind of reflecting, like with the school, the, I think my parents kind of felt like that was a reflection on them. You know, if, if I was there looking messy and, you know, with old uh, raggedy clothes, that might reflect on them. You know, think, well, what bad parents, you know, what kind of parents would send their kid to school looking, you know, with the, you know, looking like that. Uh, you know, and the same thing with, uh, with this. Really, except now you're sort of your own parent uh, thinking about uh, how it reflects on you and your brand uh, when you don't go that extra mile or decide to you know, just jump out of bed and throw something on and, and go to work or go to class versus uh, waking up a little bit early so you have time to do a proper, uh, <laughs> take a shower and shave and <laughs> uh, do whatever you know your routine is to you know, look nice. And if you're wondering who this is, I, I was curious uh, about... Uh, Pierce herself, you know, so I just typed in Erica Pierce in, into Google, and sure enough, <laughs> you can see, I can see immediately she's certainly practicing what she is uh, writing about here uh, with her ensemble here. Very professional. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is the last prompt for today. So I want you to think about your career plans. Uh, what kind of attire and wardrobe options would give you an edge in this line of work? So just think about where you want to end up. It's, it's not a one-size-fits-all. <laughs> That's a fun metaphor to use in this context. But, <laughs> you know, different kinds of jobs call for different styles and, and fashions. You know, I totally get that. I mean, the, uh, the point is I want you to think about it a little bit. And, okay, so once you have figured out basically what you should wear to, you know, take it to that next level. So, again, remember if everybody there is at a 5, you want to be a 6. And if they're at a 7, you want to be at an 8 and so on and so forth. So how might you acquire that look, those clothes, that wardrobe, on a budget? Uh, so I don't know <laughs> what you might come up with for this. I'm very eager to see uh, what you come up with. And again, if you, you know, I might end up using some of this in a future version of this lecture. So, uh, you know, I'll be sure to credit you if I end up using your tips. Anyway, I think that will do it. Hope you enjoyed this and see you next time.